Greetings and welcome. This is Rajiv Makni. The show is Gadget 360. And we've got some epic tech battles for you today. Why am I saying tech battles? Well, I'm going to give you a sampling. We'll start off with a very, very interesting. Now, I don't know whether I should call it an Asus tablet, a slate, a laptop, because they're pretty much giving you everything you need in it. So it's got the tablet. They're giving you the keyboard and stand with it so you can convert it into a laptop at any time and it works really well. And speaking of tablets and laptops, the next one is an epic battle. All of you have been asking for it. We've got the big one, the Samsung S8 Ultra Tab, you know, that beautiful 14 inch and we're going to compare it to what you've been asking. How does it compare against the iPad Pro, the 12.9 with the new M series of chips? So we'll do that battle. Then hence Sennheiser, we'll move on to that. We've got some new headphones from there. And then we've got the Red Dragon gaming mouse. It actually works as epic as it sounds. So lots happening on the show. Let's get started with today's Gadget 360 show. And the remake season continues. 21 years after its release, Remedy Entertainment is going to be remaking Max Payne and Max Payne 2. The fall of Max Payne games for PC, PS5 and Xbox Series X and S with Rockstar Games. A new development agreement is being established between the two companies for the games. This follows the Alan Wake remastered that came out last year developed by Remedy. Realme has launched a new laptop and it's called the Realme Book Prime. It comes with a 2K display with a 3x2 aspect ratio. It comes with an 11th gen Intel Core i5 processor with integrated Intel XE graphics. Coupling the screen will be Harman branded speakers. It also comes with a 65 watt charger inside the box which can fast charge the laptop. The laptop will start at the price of 57,999 rupees and will be available for purchase 13th April onwards. Our top story is the Asus Vivo OLED Slate. Okay, look, it's too long a name, so we're showing it to you right in front of me. Why are companies complicating their name so much? Imagine trying to walk into a store, you want to buy something, but you can't remember what the name is. It's such a long one. Come on, you've got to come up with more interesting names for your products. But this product is very interesting. So you're getting the tablet, but within the box, they're giving you the stand, the keyboard, and a stylus. So everything you need to take your you know, computing domain to a whole new level, you want to just do tablet work, slate work, you can do that. You want to go with a keyboard stand and you want to also get, get your stylus in. All of that is in this one box. So that's fantastic. So most of them work very well. I found the keyboard to be a little mushy. I mean, it wasn't as clicky as I'd want it to be, but not bad at all. And the magnets that actually carry everything through, attach everything, those were not strong enough, not as good as I wanted. But those are, I think, the only negatives I had. The rest of it was absolutely fantastic. Here then is our review. What we have today is a bit confusing. It is a combination of hits and misses with all of them mixed in well to be identified as useful by only a few specific people. This is the ASUS VivoBook 13 Slate OLED. It packs in a whole lot of punches, but not all of them land very well. Let's find out how. Now the Slate is designed essentially as a Windows 11 tablet. Without the accessories that come in the box, it is a slab made of an aluminium alloy with glass on the front and buttons and ports on the sides. All of the accessories connect to it via magnets, much like most of the productivity focused tablets we have come to know. There is a stand that turns to help the user place it at any angle that they want. It is made of plastic but built well and strong. The keyboard also magnetically attaches at the bottom edge with it automatically aligning with the pogo pins. The keyboard itself has a duality to it. It is built well and solid. The keys are well spaced out and give a great tactile response. The trackpad underneath is massive and offers great feedback and clicks with a loud click. But the material that covers the surface is soft touch and can feel a bit flimsy. There is also a small holder for the stylus called the ASUS Pen 2.0 which sticks to the back of the stand. While the keyboard magnets are strong, the magnets on the stand do not feel the same. We found ourselves accidentally removing it off the back of the tablet while trying to extend its angle. But given that accessories come right inside the box of the tablet, the small little disadvantages or discomfort can be ignored. 
and in terms of I.O. the collection is average and the location is worse even for a tablet form factor. There are 4 ports, all of them on the left side, 2 USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C ports, both capable of charging via power delivery, a micro SD card slot and a 3.5mm audio jack. But you can quickly start to forget the bad I.O. when you start using the display on this 2-in-1 laptop. It has a 13-inch 1080p OLED panel. It covers all of the colors in the DCI-P3 color gamut. It is not only extremely colorful, but all colors are also accurate. The brightness hits its peak at 515 nits, And all of this makes it possibly one of the best displays you can get on a 2-in-1 laptop in this price range. The content looks amazing even with the limited resolution, with amazing color reproduction and great contrast levels. The speakers that pair with it are your average laptop speakers. They do not have much pace, but the volume is satisfactory. But the performance that shows up on the screen is a little less than satisfactory. The choice of the processor might have to take the blame. It comes equipped with Intel's Pentium Silver N6000 processor which is fairly limited in its capabilities. Having multiple apps open or different tabs on Google Chrome can often result in slowdowns here and there. It takes a few seconds to open different apps at times. If the user goes for the upgraded 256GB PCIe Gen 3.0x4 SSD, it is still an old configuration that will be sluggish at times. And all of this is powered by a 50 watt hour cell that can make the laptop last for 7 to 9 hours with average use. And this late OLED charges fast through a 65 watt PD charger that comes in the box. So, after knowing everything good and bad about the Vivo Book 13 Slate OLED, the biggest question to think about is who is it for, with all of its hits and misses. It is meant to be used by the people who want a tablet with an amazing 13-inch display to watch content on, with all accessories in the box, running Windows 11, which can double as a laptop for average tasks like sending emails, managing Excel sheets, studying or video calling. If you want all of these things from a device and do not want to spend more than 45990 the Slate OLED is the way to go. But if not, you will be much better off with an iPad or a Windows laptop that costs less while being more usable and powerful. And now it's time for our epic tech challenge, our battle. This is the battle of the biggies, the Samsung Galaxy S8 Ultra. That's the tablet that's made so much of news. And we've got the big classic, the iPad Pro, the 12.9 incher with the M series of chips. So this is a really interesting battle, but we're only going to do tablet to tablet comparisons. We're not going to run away with what else it can do and everything else. Let's take a look. Which one really is the one you should go for? Remember, the iPad Pro could well turn out to be a little cheaper than the Samsung. But is that the only reason you should buy it? We'll find out. The recently launched Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra is the biggest and fastest tablet that one can find with Android on it. It has the display performance, internals and design going right up to the bleeding edge of technology. But it is also important to test it against the biggest and fastest offering from Apple, the 12.9 inch iPad Pro with M1, a device that has been a dominant force for years when it comes to premium tablets. And today we compare the two to find out which one is the better tablet for you. Both tablets sport massive displays on the front and their design finds ways to deal with the sheer mass that comes with it. The 12.9 inch iPad Pro has a thicker chassis with a 4 by 3 aspect ratio which makes it taller and less wide than the S8 Ultra which opts for an even bigger 14.6 inch panel with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. And even though both tablets can easily fatigue your hands, the iPad Pro will be much easier to handle without a case. And while both tablets seem like they will snap in half if enough pressure is applied, the S8 Ultra will give out much easier because of its slimmer and wider chassis. Another aspect that the iPad Pro pulls over the S8 Ultra is the location of the charging point of the stylus. The S Pen has to be placed at the back of the tablet to be charged and the Apple Pencil has to be placed on the side which is a much better and more accessible spot. So safe to say that when it comes to design, the iPad Pro plants itself firmly ahead. While the displays are impressive on both tablets, they are powered by different technology. The S8 Ultra has a Super AMO LED panel. The iPad Pro instead goes for a mini LED panel. Both displays have a high refresh rate of 120Hz and Quad HD resolution, 
but where the iPad Pro pulls ahead is the brightness enabled by the mini LED backlight. Due to local dimming zones enabled by the technology, the contrast is amazing and the panel gets a maximum brightness of 1000 nits which is double of the S8 Ultra. So, media consumption of HDR videos, outdoor viewing and just the overall experience is superior with the iPad Pro even if the size and aspect ratio of the display on the S8 Ultra is better. The iPad comes with the iPad OS on board while the S8 Ultra has Android 12. With Android 12 and Samsung's great software features, the multitasking capabilities of the S8 Ultra are far ahead of anything that the iPad can do. Free-flowing windows and having more than three apps on the screen are all possible. But what is even better is Dex mode, which makes the S8 Ultra work like a laptop. Where the iPad OS shines is with smoothness, stability, ease of use and better pro and creative apps like Procreate and LumaFusion, both of which are unavailable on Android so far, even though Samsung did announce at the launch event that LumaFusion is coming soon to Android. As for performance, the M1 powered iPad Pro pulls ahead as it is heavily optimized and amazing with performance without much heat being generated. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, while great with performance, does heat up but with most of it being dissipated by the big chassis of the S8 Ultra. In terms of battery life, there are some very small differences between the two. While the iPad Pro lasts 10 to 11 hours on a single charge, the S8 Ultra lags with 9 to 10 hours of usage being put out on a single charge. Both perform well when standby time is considered, but where the S8 Ultra shines is the charging time as the tablet can be charged from 0 to 100% in less than 1 hour 30 minutes with the 45 watt charger bought separately. The iPad Pro takes more than double of that with 3 hours. So, even though the battery life is better with the iPad Pro, the experience is better with the S8 Ultra. So, point for Samsung. Having a keyboard and a stylus is what makes the experience with the tablets complete and so they are very important. With the iPad, the accessories are better with the Magic Keyboard innovative and new with how it has been built and the ease of use that the Apple Pencil brings. But with Samsung, the first great thing is how the S Pen comes in the box while the Apple Pencil has to be bought separately. And even though the Magic Keyboard is better, the keyboard cover for the S8 Ultra is cheaper and has a great set of keys and trackpad. The Samsung Galaxy S8 Ultra starts at 1,8999 rupees with 256 GB of storage, while the 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro starts at 99,900 rupees with 128 GB storage. And with everything that we know, the decision on what is better depends on what the user prioritizes the most. If you want a bigger display, great multitasking, cheaper accessories, faster charging, and an overall better bang for your buck, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra is the way to go. But if a better screen, better overall software experience, better performance, better pro apps and better accessories are needed while cost is no concern, the 12.9 inch iPad Pro will be the better choice for you. Next up, one of my favorite companies because they always do things well, that's Sennheiser and these are their TWS earbuds, the CX Plus. So just under 15,000 rupees, what do you get? Sennheiser has more expensive stuff also, but this is actually a great one. First and foremost, what's very unusual is the box itself, that little carry box that you get, which is also, of course, the battery included. Looks like a miniature ice box, right? You'll understand when I actually show it to you. Then let's talk about all the other things. Good snug fit. They give you four kind of ear tips. You can customize it as well well as you like. Good battery life, 24 hours combined with the case, so that works well. But now let's get down to what really matters and that is of course the sound. So bass is good, treble is good, mids are good, sound stage not as wide as I would think. The noise cancellation is fantastic. Uh, you really get great noise cancellation. This one, Sennheiser really knows how to do that very, very well. So sound, I would give it full marks. I would want maybe for the sound stage to be a little wider. Uh, the transparency mode is good, but I think amplifies sound a little bit too much. Overall, I think this is a great product under 15,000 rupees. This is the Gadget 360 review. If we were to talk about products that just stand out in terms of how they look, Sennheiser's TWS range takes the biggest piece of the cake. 
and the new pair of TWS called the CX Plus 2 Wireless continued that tradition. From the shape of the case to the shape of the earbuds themselves, it is different. But how great is the sound? Are the mics great? Is the ANC good? All necessary questions with the necessary answers coming in the next few minutes. Alright, let's start with what makes them the most recognizable. The design. The case looks like a miniaturized icebox. It is flat at the bottom, hence it sits up. It has USB-C port on the back, so taking out earbuds while they sit and charge is always easy. Opening the lid is easy too. The hinge is solid with strong magnets at both ends of its opening and closing. But the case is a bit too large so it will bulge out of your jeans pocket very prominently. The earbuds themselves are a mixture of boxy and curvy. The top is boxy with a large touchpad for gestures. Everything underneath it curves perfectly for the fit of the earbuds to be snug and tight. The ear tips are made out of silicon and are comfortable. There are four different sizes to choose from for the user to get the perfect fit. Now once they're in your ears with the noise cancellation switched on, the earbuds wipe out most of the low end and mid level frequencies of the environment. So if you're in a noisy office or cafe sitting on a bench outside, you will hear none of the low end frequencies but some of the mid and high level frequencies will find their way in. Even so, with the music playing you will hardly hear anything. As for the transparency mode, it does work great but the sound coming in has a bit of a high pitch to it, as is common with most TWS earbuds. Now the most important part that everyone wants to know. How do these earbuds sound? They carry the same sound signature one has come to expect from Sennheiser made earbuds. The sound signature is very well balanced. If the bass is punchy, the treble matches it by being just as bright, but not as well separated as they should be. And since the sound stage is not as wide, the instrument separation is minimal. So the sound is not perfect, but it is still very impressive. But where they struggle a lot is when the user picks up a call as if the user is in a remotely noisy environment, the earbuds struggle to pick up the user's voice for calls. As for changing the tracks one listens to, gesture panel on both earbuds is one of the best we've come across. The controls are precise and fast and offer a variety of ways to control the music being played. They can be altered in the Sennheiser Smart Control app. The app itself is pretty smooth and logical. One can easily change the EQ settings to get the sound they want, alter the ANC, create sound zones so the sound is altered based on the location of the user, and enable or disable side tone which alters how much the user can hear their own voice while on calls. As for battery life, the earbuds last for 8 hours on a single charge, while the case can charge the earbuds twice over for a combined battery life for 24 hours. Even though the number is great, we expected a little more given the size of the case. The Sennheiser CX Plus 2 wireless earbuds are great with their sound, noise cancellation, software and features. But at the same time, the case might feel a bit bulky and the mics are not good for calls. And they're priced at 14990 like most of the earbuds in this price range, they are great with some aspects and not good with some others. But if the things it does well are your priority and you do not want to spend more money, go ahead and get them. If you are willing to spend a little more money, you should consider the Sony WF-1000XM4s. Let's take a quick break right now and we come back. Lots more happening on the Gadget 360 show. And next up is a gaming mouse, the Red Dragon M908. So good stuff in this one. It's about 1900 rupees, just maybe a tad lesser, one rupee lesser than that. It's a big one. So if you're a gamer with small hands, this is not the way to go. This is a big one, 12 buttons on one side, well made, everything works very well, good tactile feel, good battery life. Everything works well on this one. But like we said, not for the faint hearted and not for the small handed. Here's our review. It's finally time to review a budget gaming mouse. This is the Red Dragon M908 Impact Gaming Mouse. And what it does is concentrate on the most important things a gamer needs while letting go of some of the finer details to achieve a pretty amazing price point. And in the next few minutes you will find everything it does and the finer details it lets go of and you will understand if it's worth your time and money or not. 
Let's start with what we always start with, the design. From the first sight of it, you'll immediately understand that this mouse is not meant for smaller hands. It's a big, wide and tall mouse. But at the same time, it has all the curves needed for a medium-sized hand to be placed on it comfortably with all the fingers having a place to sit on it for optimal control. It's not fitting in any laptop bag, that is for sure. In the middle of a soft touch layer that is comfortable and grippy, and the sides are populated by glossy plastic which looks toyishly bad but still feels solid. And that solidity extends to the entirety of the mouse. The scroll wheel is designed like any other mouse except that it has bars of RGB going on each side. And the RGB can also be found on the sides of the mouse, under the Red Dragon logo, and on the multiple buttons on the left side as well. And talking about those buttons which are 12 to be precise and all programmable to whichever input the user wants to perform. This comes in handy especially with massively multiplayer games where there are hundreds of players on one server and quick adrenaline fueled reactions are the need of every second. And even though there are too many buttons in one spot, there are valleys in between all the buttons which differentiate each button from the other so the user can know which button is which through muscle memory. While that is smart, the feedback from these buttons feels mushy which is not good at all. There are also two buttons under the scroll with more RGB and controls. These two buttons change the DPI on the mouse to alter the sensitivity of the input based on the movement of the mouse. The RGB lights above it show the current level of DPI. And all of the buttons can be configured by the user and the user can even create profiles that cater to different kinds of games. In terms of performance and response while gaming, it is exquisite. The feet under the mouse are amazing for the price. The mouse glides smoothly and fast response is never hindered. The left and right mouse buttons are also incredibly tactile without ever being soft enough to result in accidental clicks. The feet also negate the lack of a good wire with a mouse. The wire is stiff and not ideal for a gaming mouse. It comes wrapped and can never be straightened out completely. But still, all things considered, the experience with gaming on this mouse has been amazing. The Red Dragon M908 Impact Gaming Mouse is great with the aspects that affect its core utility like button response, sensitivity, smoothness of its feet, its sensor and its design. But it messes up with the glossy plastic, stiff cable and mushy side buttons which while in some part affect the experience but not enough to hinder it. And for the price of just 1899 rupees, the key criticisms feel like nitpicks in an otherwise great gaming mouse. So if you have been looking for a great gaming mouse for your MMO games or pretty much any other game, we will fully recommend you to get this mouse. That then was the Gadget 360 show for this week. As always, we've got some great stuff for you coming in next week. Do join me, Rajiv Makni, on the show.